All right, here we go. Uh, another problem with the aristocracy. Problems they face. Aristocracy. Uh, let's think about uh, the holy powers, the dominant religion, sometimes the state religion sometimes separate from state and but intertwined sometimes there's a cast of priests who are separate from the nobility sometimes there are priests who are the same as the nobility sometimes there are priests who can be nobility and sometimes priests are pulled from the uh, peasantry um, we have huge differences in uh, how the dominant religion or the state religion uh, or the city religion even, is operated. But early on, religion, when it comes to civilization, as the earliest civilizations that we know, at least, we have written accounts. We have uh, clay tablets or what have you of some of these earliest civilizations. And religion was very important. When we think about the function of the priest as it relates to the king, the priest, the religious temple, uh, the religious structure, they are often one of the main validators of the king. They legitimize the king. They give a stamp of approval. But they're kind of a, a block against mm, perhaps uh, other family lines. Uh, if they don't grant their legitimacy, then you know not everyone can depose of the king and take over the kingdom if they're not backed by the religious institutions. So you see already religion can stabilize a king, legitimize a king, and in modern with modern ears, you know, that's kind of a negative. That's, you know, they're simply brainwashing the people to create security for the person who's ruling them. Yeah. You have to take it with a grain of salt and in perspective, but also keep in mind that that priestly caste or that priestly religion or cult, they also serve as sort of a stabilizer. Uh, for the people in the area. Because if you have an unstable kingship, say you have a policy of having rulers who take the throne and they don't have to be legitimized through a religion, if they simply have the power to depose of the king and the army and they step on the throne, well then, you know, um, then they're king. That's a real problem for peasants and nobility alike. Bad, because you have armies constantly creating civil war like you have at the end of the Roman Republic. You have constant civil war tearing apart Rome and the countryside and in the frontier with civil war, a horrible way to go. Uh, civil war is the people fighting themselves, the nobility fighting other noble families. It's an ugly thing. So you can see that religion has a real function in stabilizing things for good or bad reasons. But keep in mind, this legitimizing force is preferred by certain kings, especially early in their reign, who are supported by these priests and propped up. So you have someone who is from a noble line and they usurped the throne, and the priest was on this usurper's side the whole time, and they give legitimacy to this usurper because they're from a you know, say a royal line, many usurpers are, are legitimate, you might say. In other words, a usurper of a king is often of royal blood and could potentially serve on the throne legally because of their aristocratic status. Um, of course, you have to bend the law a little bit when you usurp the throne, but, uh, you know, pre-modern governments, um, they don't always make it clear. There's a lot of gray area, and that gray area is made black and white when the religion, the dominant religion, comes in and supports one over the other. They make things, the priestly caste make things black and white for the people, for the peasantry, for the nobility. They make it black and white. The more gray the world is, the more gray the law is, the more gray the government is, the more room for civil war and misunderstanding and abuse of power and constant usurping. I mean, it's tumultuous to live in a city whose king is deposed every couple years and you get a new king in and new armies come in and um, friends of yours are being assassinated because they happen to support the wrong person at the wrong time. It's horrible. 
Um, so you see with this stability that a religion can offer, not always, they can also create instability. So that's a big problem. That is a very big problem. And some kings have solved this in various ways. Let's look at India. India is a wealth of historical examples when it comes to the struggles of religious castes with ruling castes because they're so stratified. In other words, a Brahmin of the priestly caste in India wasn't supposed to rule things. They're, they're a priest. They have certain privileges, you know. But a king cannot be a priest as well. So what happens, there's an interesting, I guess you can call it an era in India, um, that gave birth to two religions, one you'll know and one you might know. And this is an interesting situation when viewed, when these religions are viewed this way, and these two religions, I'll go ahead and let you know now, Buddhism is one and Jainism is the other in India. Now, Buddhism has spread everywhere. Jainism does still exist, but it's very small. These two religions, when I think of them, I think of many things, but I also think of the time that these religions were born. And this was a very special time. And, and these two religions are very unique, in my opinion, um, in India, because they are not from the Brahmins. These religions are not from the priestly caste. Something's totally weird. Something's totally wacky here. And that is that Buddhism and Jainism come out of an era where the kingly caste is trying to separate power from the priestly caste. So what's going on here is Buddhism and Jainism both arise from people who were part of the kingly caste, in other words. So Buddhism, Siddhartha, the historical Buddha, is said to be the son of a great king, and he was given two choices. He will either be a great ruler, or he'll be a great spiritual leader. And he chose the latter. Siddhartha became the Buddha, and Buddhism exists. <laughs> um, so, this is interesting because this creates a ripple with Brahmins, with the priestly caste, in that um, Buddhists are not Brahmin. They're just priests from... Uh, the kingly caste. It's a religion that, in a way, takes power away from that dominant, fundamental religious institution. Very fascinating. So you can almost view that shift in religious institution, the shift in religious institutions, in that way. You can view Bu Buddhism and Jainism as, uh, in a way, taking power away from the Brahmanic, uh, from the Brahmin castes. So if you study the history of Buddhism, um, you'll see that there are occasional struggles between the two. I'll give you some more examples, but I have to go into this store here. Go in here real quick. Hey, um, I'll take a, a regular size Bic. Let's go with orange, perhaps. Um, do you have any more of your, um, <laughs> okay, that's all right. Um, uh, what are they? Let's go with, yeah, that one right there is good, yeah. Uh, yeah, is there anything else kind of like that? It's not, get me one of those. Oh, okay. And if there's any others you know of, a sampler. Sweet. Just local? Yeah, it's local. Really? That's cool. Need your coffee or anything, man? Oh, no, I'm good. Cool. Thanks a lot.
All right, Ugh. I think we're still going. Where am I going? That's the question. 